at any time during that evening. Also, going back to yesterday, there were these two socks that were found soaking wet way on the other side of the room. And the DNA in those socks inside was Sylvie's DNA, but outside was the defendant's DNA, which leads one to conclude that he may have pulled the socks off when he uh, submerged her in the tub. Patty, you looked at some of the testimony of Brooks' behavior yeah. after his arrest. I wonder if you have a reaction yeah. or doing some input for us. There's a couple of different things that I think are remarkable. Um, what's striking, obviously, is that he went in and he fell asleep first at the interrogation table and then for several hours and then came back and was questioned. Obviously, I want to know from you about the drugs or alcohol possibility that might have affected him. But when you look at that, um, the tape, the surveillance tape, he was so agitated. He was pacing back and forth. The fact that a few hours later he could go and he could sleep before he knew he would be questioned is amazing to me. I teach interviews and interrogation techniques. It's very unusual for somebody about to be questioned in a possible homicide to fall asleep. Also, he was only interviewed for 30 minutes. To me, there's uh, something that's interesting about that. But he did make eye contact throughout the interview, and he didn't ask for any of the questions to be repeated. I teach, again, in interrogation techniques. That's unusual. You, usually when somebody is in this agitated state or sleeping, all these things, they ask to the questions to be repeated. They're unclear. They don't make eye contact. That's that's interesting to me. When did he, when did he suddenly gain confidence? Yeah, Wendy, I wonder if it's uh, liquid courage that he had some alcohol on board and he had a little bit of a sociopathic tendency and felt a little grandiose and entitled. What do you think? I, I agree with you, and I think that, you know, he was probably working very hard to make it clear that he was going to have that eye contact, he was going to appear alert. But you know, Dr. Drew, remember, some people under stress do fall asleep alcohol aside because of the stress of the situation, too, and they suddenly can black out. So that might have played a part of it. But how interesting that Sylvie asked him to write that apology letter. It's so many women in America, Dr. Drew, they want to change the bad boy. This is not uncommon. And they get self-esteem from making him do these little acts like somehow they're winning this game. Yeah, listen, let's can just... I, can let's, I talk, you know, Dr. Can, Drew... Wait, Patty, really quick. Patty? Yeah. Going I back want to talk a little program, bit about... Uh, um, I want to talk a little bit about the content analysis of that apology letter. Um, he says, I hope, twice. And I know from content analysis that obviously weakens the message. But specifically, he says, I hope you can believe me when I say. And in deception detection, that's a really big tell that the right. statement following that is deceit, is right. a lie. He's, uh, I'm used to my patients talking like that. Peyton, what did you want to say? Uh, you know, his courtroom demeanor also shows quite a bit of bravado. Mm. You know, he's taking vigorous mm. notes throughout the trial, and I noticed on some of the first few days he would tap his pen so loudly you could literally hear it in the audience. He looks down a lot, and then really notably, he doesn't wear socks every single day. And I think that's because of these, these wet socks that were found on the other side of the room, and there's some bit of, some bit of connection there. I don't know. Samantha, want to finish I, this up? Go. Yeah, I just hate hearing the fact that he was cocky in the courtroom. I hope Nicholas Brooks listened real hard today when the medical examiner stated that Sylvie Cachet died from strangulation and drowning. And good luck, Nicholas Brooks, because you're going to spend a long time in jail. No one's buying your defense. I think part of that socklessness is part of the bravado as well. Got a question or comment for the Behavior Bureau? Tweet us at Dr. Drew HLN, hashtag Behavior Bureau. Next, jurors saw this photo, and we will be showing, there we are, we are showing it.